I can spot people who are Dalmatian before they open their mouths. You recognise Dalmatian people? They're beautiful people. <laughs> Square shoulders. Big heads. Square heads. Cheekbones. Box head. Very solid build. Women will wear too much face um, makeup. Handsome guys. <laughs> beautiful women. They'll have to have their upper lip waxed. And also very modest. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually not a bad book. Florida Vila, Kiwi novelist, born into Dalmatia under the Nazi occupation. A Dalmatia which was fighting a world war, a civil war, and a communist revolution. The place was an absolute mess. I wanted most of all to vindicate my father's name. Yuri fell backwards, a look of amazement on his face. Nede lifted her hands up as though to shield him and heard an unnatural scream she didn't recognize as her own. This is about Florida's father, who spoke out against the violent measures that the communists used. And what happened? He got murdered for it. Can you believe that? All two weeks before Florida was born. I could only even attempt to start to write it um, when there was no longer Yugoslavia. Because if I had ever written that, like in Yugoslavia, I'd have to fear for myself and my children. I think I belong to one of the first generations of Croatian New Zealanders that are so blessed and so lucky that we can enjoy what I call the best of both worlds, the old and the new. I think the lobby. Mm. The great daily name. Great bus company up these ways. And here comes my lift. The last gum digger of Lake Ohio. here. Go on, my friend. Go on, Sammy. How are you, mate? Good, mate. What do you call that? That's a gum spear. That's gum spear. For, that's for looking for it. Poke it in the ground. That's so. Yep. And there we are. We've hit sandstone. How do you know that sense, though? Mate? I can you can't tell. even see it. Experience, mate. Mm. Well, that sounds like something, eh? Yeah, that's it. So, uh, I suppose I'll be doing the digging, eh? Yep. There's a piece out, look. I suppose it's better get my hands dirty. Yep. Here you get. So, what's this for? Put your gum in. Oh. The Dallies came here and they hit these swamps in such a force that it actually blew the European digger away. They worked in groups. They had a cooperative as opposed to an individualistic approach to the uh, task of gum digging. And of course, the rewards were shared. This, along with the general suspicion of non-English, led to an anti delhi panic in Parliament and the newspapers. They did actually ban the Dalys digging off crown land in early days. So do you remember uh, when you were a young fella, did you used to do this? Yep, do exactly what you're doing now, only a hell of a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have these Dalmatians, not really welcomed as foreigners. And who have they got to interact with? Local Maori, who are also involved in gum digging. And more importantly, who include a whole lot of young females. But once they had the wherewithal to attract young brides from the old country, and that meant possibly a return to the old country to find a bride from the local village, or possibly a proxy bride that would be arranged by relatives in the home village. She had two options, one to come to New Zealand to marry my father, and the other option to go to South America to marry another person who had also offered hand in marriage. <laughs> How she made the decision, I don't know. It was very, very hard to leave this country that she loved and that, you know, was her life. Um, but then she thought of me. So she decided with a heavy heart to come to New Zealand and marry this man she didn't know. A woman came out to marry a particular guy that exchanged photographs. And he, of course, sent a photograph of himself when he was a strapping young man, 15 years ago, maybe. He came out and she saw him, 
No way was she going to marry this guy. No way at all. There were volunteers there. They said, well, I'll marry you. So she married one of these fellows, you see. She had to, because within so many days she had to be married or had to go back. There was a limit on immigration, you see, at the time. Some worked out, some didn't. I suppose they just had to put up with that. In that respect, my grandparents were probably pretty fortunate because they seemed happy, or from the outside they did anyway. That's why they got on so well together. The English shunned the Dalmatians, they shunned the Māori people as well. well. Neither of them were any good at English, but they tell you what, they loved big families. They also loved to have a good laugh and take the piss out of each other. Kako to kato, stay tuned to Radio Tehiku. Right here in Gun Diggers Paradise, a big kia ora to all our daily friends and to our Ngāti Tarawa whānau. You'll enjoy this one. Tell you what, you'd be hard pressed to find any Māori community up the north here who actually don't have any Delhi blood in them. Hey, stop the bus for a minute. This is a hard case, isn't it? English, Māori and Dobrodosli, Croatian. The Petrisevich clan gave rise to two famous Tarera Māori daughters of the far north, entertainer Tina Cross and her late great-aunt, the political activist, academic and beauty queen, Dame Mira Sazi. What she achieved as a lone Māori woman in her day was phenomenal. And as the first Māori woman to graduate from university, she went on to Women's Welfare League and many, many other areas. And at one point she was on, I think I read somewhere like 22 organisations. But I think her work to better and promote Māori women and children was probably for me the most remarkable. I regret not sitting down with her because I'm now reading about her. And when I read about her, I think I wish I knew this woman better, it's too late. The story goes that when the young Mira Patricevich was an aspiring beauty queen, she was told to change her Delhi surname so as not to disadvantage her chances. And with a name like Patricevich, you know, just, just being in, in a man's world, so to speak, it must have been fairly difficult. Came the First World War and the Dalmatians were suddenly identifiable as Austrian enemy aliens. When my father and some of his fellow countrymen were trying to get into the New Zealand Army for his trouble he got put onto a government sort of sponsored work on the railway, he was less than impressed with that sort of treatment. However, to his everlasting credit, as far as I'm concerned, he got on with life and made the best of what he had. And I take my hat off to him. After the war, the gum fields had largely dried up and the delis began to move into other industries. Road building, stone masonry, quarries, farming. Heaps of my cousins owned their own businesses in construction and tunnelling. My dinner was unusual in that respect. He actually worked all his life for the Minister of Works, and so did the old man. He should have gone into business himself. He'd be a lot richer now. Well, Alec, that's my middle brother. We worked together for about 10 or 12 years doing a lot of rock walls, mostly walls like this one. So tell me, why is it that in the Dalmatian culture there's always, always all these family businesses? I think with Delis especially, they don't want to have a boss. They don't want to do it themselves, be responsible for themselves and what they're doing, and nobody else telling them what to do. Clem went on to become a policeman and married a top model, Anne Lynch. But when her parents and her family found out that, you know, she was dating a part Maori Delhi policeman, you know, they would not talk to my father. They would not look at him. And then what happens? My father ends up becoming a politician. But it's funny how life works out. Huh? 